typing in YouTube. I'm going to show you today how I make my turmeric tea. And I've been making this every morning, uh, sometimes at night. And I absolutely love it. So check this out. All right, so this is the recipe for the golden milk turmeric tea. I've um, been picking turmeric from the garden. That much is enough for one serving, for a nice strong serving. All you have to do, take a little planer, shred it up a little bit. I have a couple different varieties of this. This one is the more orange. The one I've been using earlier this week was yellow. I have a blue one and a green one. Um, I like this orange one a lot. This one has probably the strongest um, flavor that I've had of the, of the two this year, but without being real bitter. I like it a lot. Last year I had the some of the blue and it's pretty powerful stuff, but I didn't use it the way I'm using it now. So I'm gonna try that recipe again and uh, see how it goes. One thing about doing this is that your fingers will turn yellow. My fingernails are like permanently stained from doing this every day. But um, they say it's good for your skin. But anyway, that's probably figure a little over a tablespoon. You probably don't need that much, but I like it pretty strong. I just have one of these little tea pots with a strainer inside. Um, you can see it just holds holds all the ingredients inside. So I put the the uh, turmeric in there, and then I like to do a little crack of pepper on top, just because that's supposed to help with the uh, assimilation of the turmeric. I usually put a little cinnamon to give it a little different taste, and then you can sweeten it however you want, or if you want, you don't have to sweeten it. Um, I've done it with honey, I've done it with sugar. Um, I like it sweet, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, my version of chai, chai tea, um, but there's no caffeine, which is good for me because I, I don't do well with caffeine. Uh, and then the final ingredient, which is the most important, actually, let me, let me back up real quick. Obviously, now that I've got my stuff put in there, I've got to put the hot water in. I usually let this steep for about at least five minutes, preferably a little bit longer, maybe 10. Um, let it get nice and orangish color. If I didn't have the brown sugar, this wouldn't be as dark. So if you if you make this and it's not quite this dark, that's part of that is coming from this, this brown sugar. So it might be more of a pale yellow color like this. Um, so don't be surprised if you get a different color making it if you're not using the same sugar. So as you're going, just, just realize you're going to stain everything. Your fingers, cutting board, the cups. It will come off. It just takes a little bit of scrubbing. Even this thing's pretty well stained. Every I don't wash it real hard every time just because I'm using it for the same thing every day. But it will come off. It will you know just takes a little bit of effort. Um, but anyway, the, the last ingredient that I add is uh, my homemade coconut milk. This, to me, is what makes it... The premium. I just made this so it hasn't even really thickened up yet but usually what I do is about three tablespoons to make it nice and rich and you don't have to use that much. Um, if you don't have you know your own homemade obviously you can use store-bought coconut milk. I would probably use a little bit less of theirs because it's a, usually a little bit thicker and it depends on whether you're buying the coconut cream or the coconut milk the cream is going to be thicker, so you can use less. Uh, mine, you can see it's just starting to separate. As it stays in the fridge, this will this will separate a little bit more, and it'll get thicker, and it'll actually be kind of a cream. Um, the bottom part, I usually either drink or just put it into a curry or a soup or something. But that's the last main ingredient. And then you can pour on your tea, like so. And 
And there you have it. Give it a little stir. And you're ready to go.